Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're gonna to talk about how to make your writing clearer. Now, before we get started on the tips, I wanna reiterate something that we say a lot on this channel. Role-playing is writing for an audience of one. So what that means is if your partner's digging what you're doing and you're digging what you're doing and you both are satisfied, just keep doing what you're doing. However, if you're someone that's looking to improve your writing in a technical sense, stay tuned because this video is for you. We're going to talk about how role-playing can be a vehicle for you to practice making your writing more easily understood by any reader. And this is gonna improve your technical writing, your essay writing, and your creative writing. First, and the sort of obvious thing, is having good grammar and spelling. Now, I sort of cheat on this, and I'm gonna tell you guys how to cheat too. I use a browser extension called Grammarly, and I'm gonna link it down in the description for you guys so that you can try it out too. This is the best spelling and grammar check that I have found, and it's totally free. So highly recommend, if you have any trouble with grammar and spelling, to download this. It's gonna give you a really good sort of basis for spelling and punctuation correction. The other thing I use is Google. Google actually has one of the best spell checkers I have ever found, and that's because it's basically crowdsourced. Google knows what you meant to say because hundreds or thousands of other people have typed the same in thing into Google and meant to say the same thing you meant to say. So if your spell checker isn't catching it and something looks weird, pop it in Google. Now, I am not the best speller. In fact, I'm pretty terrible at it. So I'm gonna tell you from one bad speller to another, if this is you too, that the only way to correct bad spelling in my experience is just to memorize the word. If you have a word you misspell over and over and over, drill it until that stops happening and you've memorized the spelling of that word. Let's talk about clear writing now. Some of the best writing is clear writing. It doesn't matter how beautiful your words are if your reader doesn't understand what you're saying. Writing needs to be understood. It's a vehicle for communication. So we're gonna talk just a little bit about how to make sure that your writing is as clear as possible. For clear writing, we use active voice. Now, not every language and culture prefers active voice, but in English, we do. So how do you know if you're using active voice or passive voice? Passive voice is when we move the object of the sentence into the subject. So for example, the book is being read. The book in this sentence is the object of the verb read, but we've moved it into the subject of the sentence. So that means the active voice version of this sentence is I am reading the book. An easy way to check yourself and figure out if you've written a passive voice sentence or not when you're not sure is to add by zombies to the end. And thank you so much for the original tweet that went viral for this. I absolutely love this tip. So if we go back to our example sentence, the book is being read, we can say the book is being read by zombies. And it makes perfect sense. So if you are looking at a sentence and you're just not quite sure, try appending by zombies and see if it still works and makes sense. If it does, you've probably got a passive voice sentence. Now with all of this, I'm not saying never use passive voice. There are reasons you might want the object in the subject. Just in English, active voice is preferred and it's gonna be easier to understand. So the next thing to consider is specificity. Using specific words instead of their more general variant can sometimes help you hone in on exactly what you want to say. So when you're thinking of switching it up and using a synonym, Think about if that synonym more specifically conveys the connotation that you're trying to convey. Now, this doesn't mean pepper in too much jargon or $20 words. Our goal is still to make our writing clearer, which means it needs to be understood. And a lot of times $20 words are $20 words because most people don't know what they mean. So when you're thinking of using a really jargony or like a $20 word, consider the setting of the role play, consider the time that it takes place and consider the mood that you're going for. So for example, if you're writing a medieval fantasy, it's perfectly acceptable to use the word privy. But if you're writing a high school role play, just use bathroom. Related to that, don't be scared of a little repetition. Words like said, hair, and eyes are perfectly acceptable words. For example, also when you're talking about your character, it's okay to say your character's name multiple times. We only want to refer to their appearance or their job or whatever if we're trying to call attention to that particular aspect of that character. 
If we're not, just say their name again. When it comes to these words, they're really simple and easy to gloss over, and what that means for the reader is they're able to continue what's going on in their imagination. When we do things like swapping hues for eyes or petals for lips, it sort of takes the reader out of the prose and reminds them that they're reading. So to keep the writing engaging and clear, just use the words you mean to use. It's also good to keep in mind your sentence length. It's not a hard and fast rule, but if you have a sentence that's longer than 20 words, consider possibly breaking it up. We don't want our partner to get lost in a sentence trying to figure out where it ends. This will also help you cut down on run-on sentences if you struggle with having too many run-on sentences in your writing. Next is proofreading. Now, of course, when it comes to role play, you're not trying to publish anything. Likely only one person is ever going to read it. So does it really matter if it's perfect? Well, no, but this is a good opportunity to practice our proofreading skills. So why not do it? So how do we proofread? First, use your spell check tool. I use Grammarly, which we talked about in the beginning, links down below. Use whatever spell check tool is applicable to your situation, if not Grammarly. Next, Read once for accuracy and ask yourself, did I write the thing I meant to write? Lastly, read once for formatting and technical accuracy. So are things like your punctuation correct? Do you have any run on sentences? Situations like that, that your spell checker might not catch. You'll be amazed at how much your writing improves over time just by going through and deliberately proofreading. You'll start to realize the types of mistakes you make over and over, and you'll be able to correct them in the first process of writing the post. And it's just going to improve your writing so much over time if you practice this. So that's all I have for today. Do you guys use any of these tips? If not, what sort of things do you do to make your writing more clear? Let me know down below. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notification, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.